How to get an A in math, the third lesson. And in this one, I'm going to talk about preparing for tests and writing tests, because they're two different things, right? So when you're preparing for a test, the first thing you would do is go over your notes, right? Look over your notes. Maybe your teacher gave you some quizzes um, that you could try again to make sure you understand. But go through your notes and make a Coles note version. Write down all the things, the key points. And again, this is where you could turn in your textbook to that section at the end of each of the chapters called key points. Write those out. Make sure you understand each of the concepts that were covered in each of the sections of the chapter. Um, go over your homework questions you had trouble with. Don't bother doing the questions you found easy. Do the ones you had trouble with. And if you had trouble with a word problem, do the word problem two, three times. Make sure you can do it with your eyes shut because sure enough, the one that you didn't practice is going to be the one that's on the test, right? It always goes that way. So do them, do them until you understand the intricacies of the problem. Um, and then when the numbers change or the situation changes, you'll be just fine. Um, try some questions that weren't assigned as well. So if your teacher assigns a, C, E, G, do, B, D, G, whatever it is. <laughs> you can figure that out better than me. Okay, so do extra work. Um, I used to have a student that would do absolutely every, every question in the book and come and ask me, how do I do this one? How do I do that one? Uh, sure enough, she was well over 90%. So do what's assigned and a little bit more. If you find the first parts really easy, skip a few. Do the ones that are harder, but try every type of question your teacher has asked you to do. Okay, so now for the test. A lot of students get very nervous when there's a test, right? You, I can see it as I pass the tests around. They're just sitting there shaking. So what do you need to do? First of all, take a deep breath and try to relax. Whoops, my video's jumping around. Um, take a deep breath, relax your shoulders, especially people are like this. They're so nervous. And if you've prepared yourself for this test, it's going to be easy and you need to have that confidence that you have done the homework and you will be successful on this test. That's the attitude you want to bring to it. I've studied for it. I understand it. And this is going to be easy. First thing you should do though, after you've taken your deep breath, is do all the questions that are easy for you to do. Do them all. If the first question stumps you, skip it. Go to the next one. Don't waste time on a one or two mark question when there's more down the road. And also sometimes um, you're so nervous that you can't think. And the first one, even though it was really easier, you draw a blank. But as you go through other questions, it'll come to you, right? So. Say, for instance, it was um, a trig question and maybe you forgot Sokotoa. But as you went down, there was another question that asked you what Sokotoa meant. And then you go, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember sine, cosine, tangent, and, and now I know how to do it. So don't get stuck on an easy question. Don't get stuck on the first question. Um, well, not don't get stuck. Don't get don't don't stump yourself and stop when you're stumped. Stop. Don't stop when you're stumped. That's a good saying. Okay, so you work your way, you look through the questions, you look at the ones that have more marks given to them. Those are the ones you wanna focus on. Like you're not gonna waste time on a one mark question you couldn't get when there's a 10 mark one that if you put a little effort into it, you could get, right? Um, so when you have done a first run through, go back and go over the, the questions you didn't get. Never leave anything blank. That's very key for any math any math test, exam, whatever. Never leave a blank. Um, you may find that um, it might be a word problem that you're having trouble with. And maybe you can write down what's been given. Maybe you can write out the let statement. Maybe you can think of a formula that you could use. I mean, even if you show some understanding of, of the content of the question, or even if you write in words, I need to use a quadratic formula and I've forgotten it. It's better than nothing, right? Although most teachers give things like quadratic formula these days anyway. If you're in calculus, 
the derivative. Calculus is all about taking derivatives of everything. So the least you could do is take the derivative, which you will be very good at by the time you write an exam. Uh, draw a diagram. If it's a word problem, maybe drawing a diagram will help you and 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 label it. Put put things on from the question. You'll get marks for that kind of stuff. It's not stuff. It's math, right? You're showing your understanding of of how the problem should be set up. Um, never hand in your test before the end of the class, unless absolutely everyone has. It was so easy. You were done in fifteen minutes. Okay. Take the time to go over it. And by going over the test, I don't mean just looking at it. Try a question over on the side, um, because sometimes when you re, uh, when you look at a question that you've done, you don't see the problem. You don't see your, your mistake because it might be a little negative sign. Most often, most often than not is a negative sign that causes a problem, right? Um, take your time. If it's um, factoring, a question where you're going to factor it, try expanding it to see if it goes back to the unfactored form um, and vice versa. If it's in factored, put it into expanded and then go back to factored form. Um, there's lots of ways that you probably have learned during your lessons on how to check your solutions by substituting in a value, see if it works, that sort of thing. So again, if there, um, if it's a word problem, at least write the let statement down. Make sure that you have a concluding statement when you're doing a word problem, a let statement, a concluding statement. And most of all, don't forget the units. Students often forget units and it might be worth the mark, you know, millimeters cubed, if it's volume, millimeters squared, and so on. Um, the other one that I've often seen students make mistake on is time. They'll say, you know, at what time will something happen? And you'll say, 4.2 hours. Mm, that's that's an okay solution, but your 0.2 of an hour should be translated into minutes so that you have four hours and and so many minutes. Okay, so those are those are ways you can approach your your tests. And again, make sure that you you do everything you can on a test. Don't hand it in unless. Everyone, like I said, everyone else has done it, but more importantly that you've taken the time to go over it because silly little mistakes are mistakes that, that um, add up. So if you follow this advice and all the three things I've talked to you about in these three lessons, I'm sure you'll have a successful year. Um, don't forget that I'm here for you. If you have any questions um, about the videos, Remember that all the videos are there for grade 10 academic, grade 11 functions, grade 12 advanced functions, grade 12 calculus and vectors. They're all in the playlist sections. Every lesson that I would have taught in a classroom had I been your teacher. So it's great. Thanks for watching my channel. I wish you all the best in the coming year. And um, some of you I know will be off to university. Some of the students I taught last year um, I wish everybody the best and, and of course all of these um, lessons on how to get an E in math will work right through to your university days. So all the best. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Only about 30% of the people who watch are subscribers and it would be great if you all did. It improves the channel's visibility and also brings more people um, for extra help right here. Thanks for watching.